Here's the story of how a brilliant pediatrician discovered thalassemia in Detroit children. A few very sick children came to see Dr. Thomas Benton Cooley. Each of them had this full left-sided belly and they all had interesting facial features. Their cheeks and their jaws really stood out. He noticed that all of these kids were five years or younger and all of them were of Greek or Italian descent. Dr. Cooley drew their blood and did some labs. As it turns out, all the kids were anemic. And if you wanna learn more about anemia, check out my last video. He then looked at their blood under the microscope and he saw something really abnormal in each of their blood samples. Instead of having normal red blood cells that are nice and red, that are disc shaped with smooth edges, cells that look like each other, the children had cells that looked like this. They were red blood cells that were of completely different sizes and shapes. Most of them were pale and not very red at all. Some of them were super small and some of them even looked like a bullseye. Now I have to mention this pediatrician had zero formal training in blood or hematology. I almost wonder why he even looked at their blood, like how did he know what to look for? And he looked at it with so much detail. And soon he realized what he saw under the microscope, plus the left-sided belly fullness, plus the facial features was likely some sort of blood disorder. So he started telling other doctors about his observations. In 1925, he presented all of his observations to the American Pediatric Society, and he had to give this disorder a name, and he wanted to call it something very technical and sciencey, but everyone else wanted to call it Cooley's anemia after him, Dr. Cooley, and he didn't like that. I heard that he was a very humble guy. He didn't want something named after himself. So he said, why don't we call it Mediterranean anemia because this is showing up in kids who came from or have families from countries around the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy, Greece, and Cyprus. And here's a stamp actually from Cyprus showing this disorder. But today we now know this blood problem named as something else, and it's called thalassemia. The emia comes from the Greek word for blood, and thalassa comes from the Greek word sea. And this actually popped up in a movie I watched recently called The Menu. And in it, there's this like very critical food critic who comes to this restaurant on an island and the first course is this like giant scallop that's served on a rock and it's presented to her and she's like so pretentious and she starts critiquing it before she even takes a bite of the food. So she takes a bite and then she tells her dinner companion it tastes thalassic and he's looking at her like, what are you talking about? And she explains oceanic and then I think it's the guy who says, oh, thalassa was the goddess of the sea. Back to thalassemia. Thalassemia is a problem in making hemoglobin, the stuff that's inside red blood cells that carries oxygen and it's what makes red blood cells red. Normal adult hemoglobin is this quad of four globins, two alpha globins in yellow and two beta globins here in orange. And the globins come in pairs and to form these quads, the pairs wanna be with a different pair of globins. In thalassemia, you don't make a certain type of globin. So there's alpha and there's beta thalassemia. And the thalassemia is named after whatever globin has the shortage. So Cooley's anemia is a type of beta thalassemia. It's a problem with not making enough beta globins. So the Detroit kids' blood cells looked so abnormal because one, they're pale, there's not enough hemoglobin being made, so there's not enough redness in the cells, and two, their shape, these funky shapes, were caused by very lonely alpha globins who didn't have enough beta globins to combine with. And these globin pairs don't like to be alone, like truly, even if it means making some abnormal quad, it will do it rather than stay alone as a pair. If these lonely alpha globin pairs don't find their beta globin pair, these alpha globin pairs will clump and clump and actually form these giant aggregates. And these aggregates are super toxic and they damage the red blood cell very badly. I picture them and then rendered them as these aggregates poking at the red blood cell so that you start getting these very strange shapes that you see from both the top when you look through a microscope, but also from the side. And as for those bullseye cells, they're called target cells. And I read somewhere that these cells are actually bell shaped. So here is what I think target cells look like. It's a very damaged bell shaped red blood cell. And at the top of the bell, you've got this clump of hemoglobin. Maybe there are a bunch of alpha aggregates in there. When you look at this cell under the microscope from the top, you see a bullseye. The Detroit children had the more severe version of this beta thalassemia. It's called beta thalassemia major. 
And without treatment, the life expectancy is about five years, but there are treatments today. I got a question on this on my last TikTok. There is a less severe version of this. It's called beta thalassemia minor. It's also called beta thalassemia trait. And the people who have this have a normal life expectancy. Tennis legend Pete Sampras has this. So with beta thalassemia minor, you still make slightly less beta globin. So you'll get a couple alpha aggregates here and there, but it's not enough to cause massive, massive health problems. And if you looked at the smear of someone with beta thalassemia minor, you would see this, you would see pale cells, and you would see those target cells. If you like this video, let me know, and if there's another type of anemia you want me to cover, put it in the comments.